way. Overnight tornadoes touching down in Chicago. Dramatic funnels forming over the city. Look, at look, 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 look. Right here. Right, yep, right, right there. there. See it? it? See it spinning up? Yep. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Look at that spinning up there. Right, right, right there. in front of you. Clouds gathering over Lake Michigan. And passengers left stranded at Chicago O'Hare. It's part of the extreme weather coast to coast. For more than 100 million Americans, it's already a scorching summer, with oppressive heat gripping much of the south and southwest. It's 100 and too many. A heat dome is responsible for consecutive days of record triple-digit temps, testing the limits of first responders. In Phoenix, firefighters are bracing for a sweltering 115-degree day, marking two weeks at or above 110. We have deaths inside of homes within the city of Phoenix, and to us, that's just unacceptable. The inside of Maria Larumbe Cruz's trailer feels like an oven. You spend all day here. Okay. This room, cooled by an air conditioning unit, is her only refuge. But she says it's a struggle to pay her monthly bill. <laughs> California, Texas, and Florida are also hitting record-setting highs. Residents doing what they can to stay safe and cool. We are taking uh, breaks as much as possible in the air conditioning. El Paso is expected to continue its hot streak with a record 28 days at 100 degrees or hotter, while Miami hit a record high at 97 degrees, with a heat index over 100 for 31 days and counting. With extreme heat not considered a FEMA disaster, states are left to fend for themselves, something politicians on both sides of the aisle want to change. It's a national problem. The push for help coming as the whole country weathers a summer of baking heat and intense storms. Right now here in Phoenix, it's 95 degrees and it's only four in the morning. Experts say if you're waking up in this kind of heat, there are things you can do to take care of yourself during those peak heat hours. Make sure you stay inside, stay hydrated and watch out for local resources like cooling centers to help you stay safe. Hoda. And check on your neighbors too. Erin uh, McLaughlin there in Phoenix. Erin, thank you. Also this morning, flood ravaged areas of the Northeast are bracing for even more rain on the heels of storms that dropped two months worth of precipitation in just two days. NBC's Kristen Dahlgren is in Hardwick, Vermont for us this morning. Kristen, good morning. Good morning, Savannah. And I want to take you to the Inn by the River and what may be one of the most enduring images of this flood. This wasn't just a hotel that was washed away by floodwaters. This was somebody's dream. The couple bought it. They fixed it up. It was supposed to be their retirement. Now it is a total loss. Residents in Vermont bracing for more heavy rain today as the state's governor urges everyone to stay vigilant. This may not be over with rain in the forecast and nowhere for it to go. We could see waters rise again. FEMA helping organize disaster efforts with the National Guard ready to mobilize if there's more flooding. We're just staging in locations to be ready and prepared to respond. As widespread devastation from the catastrophic flooding sets in for so many living here. What is it like to come home to find this? It's devastating, absolutely devastating. I, I, I have no words. We just need help. That desperation echoed in towns across the state with lifetimes of memories now irreparably damaged in just days. We're going to lose the stuff that means the most to us. But we have our cats and we have each other. Murky floodwater still filling many streets. Others lined with piles of debris and mud as residents start assessing the damage. What do you do? I mean, you scrape it up. Where do you put it? It's a long road ahead for business owners in downtown Montpelier. It's a big mess. But local officials are now cautiously optimistic as the Wrightsville Dam and other state rivers have started to recede. All rivers are expected to be below flood stage within the next 24 hours. And communities begin to rebuild. We will definitely come back from this. And as you take another look at the damage here, you can also see how far the river has fallen. And officials say that is really their hope as we go through the next few days, that the waters have receded enough in these rivers and tributaries to hold a little bit more that's coming with these rainstorms. Savannah. All right, Kristen Dahlgren. Thank you, Kristen. Let's get some more on the storms and the heat. Let's bring in weekend today's Angie Lastman. Hey, Angie, good morning. Good morning, guys. I wish I had better news for that same area. We're going to see another round of some of these strong storms.
storms working through and bringing with it some heavy rain. This is the same complex of storms that worked through parts of Illinois and Michigan yesterday, bringing some of those uh, tornadoes that we reported. Now, as far as the heavy rain is concerned, again, some of those hard hit areas, places like Vermont, New York, New Hampshire could see these rainfall rates impressive, up to two inches per hour. This is, of course, not what we need when we're trying to uh, clean up, and we could see some flash flooding concerns through the day today. When it's all said and done, we could potentially be seeing widespread amounts, maybe an inch to two inches, but localized amounts up to five inches across this area. This does include, again, those same places that received those two months worth of rain in a really short period of time earlier in the week. And of course, we cannot not talk about the heat. It is uh, impressive across much of the country, including the southwest. But let's focus on parts of the southeast and parts of the southern plains. Corpus Christi hits 95 degrees today, feeling like 114. Memphis, you're going to feel like 108, even up into the northeast where we don't have heat alerts. We're still going to be continuing to feel really uncomfortable and very summer like we go into tomorrow. 90s still out there. Triple digits for the feels like temperatures remaining along the Gulf Coast in Texas. You really haven't had a break in Texas. That's going to continue today. We'll feel summer like throughout the weekend. It only uh, continues for places like Texas as we get into the next couple of days. Dallas 102 on Saturday, ladies, 97 on Sunday and Monday. We hit 103. It's going to be an uncomfortable couple of days for folks there. We'll have to be, of course, cranking that AC. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We'll check back, Angie. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.